Howdy data people. In this video, I want to talk to you about documenting your data model and incorporating a business matrix or bus matrix into that documentation. Want to learn more about this matrix? Well, let's get started there. Okay, so the business matrix, or as this Kimball article talks about, called the matrix, is a way to help you gather requirements for your enterprise data warehouse, or even just for some reports to understand what dimensions and how they will relate to your facts. We scroll down in this article, which I'll include a link below. This is what it looked, what this matrix looks like. It typically has your dimensions across the top and your business process events or uh, your fact tables along the side. Everywhere where there's an X means that there's a relationship between these objects. So you could see here that customer billing has a relationship with time, with customer rate category, but it does not have a relationship with the calling party dimension or the called party dimension. So this is good to document upfront, but it's also good to document after you produced your, your data model. So you can kind of compare the two and gap the two to find out maybe where you need to go or what part of this overall enterprise matrix is implemented into a model. That's a part that you could automate with RBI reports. What does this look like from an uh, automated report? Well, here's one that I've produced from a customer model and we could see it has multiple fact tables down the side and I use check marks to show everywhere that it uh, that there's a relationship. This comes out very, very useful in having people utilize your model. Again, I happen to call it a bus matrix, short for a business matrix. I've heard uh, conforming matrix. There's a couple different words for it. If you want to change those titles, you could definitely do that. So how to produce one. I got started with this from the two Alex on their YouTube channel. One of the first episodes that I see here was episode two. They talked about documenting your data model and they provided a this starting point PBI, PBIT template uh, file on their GitHub. I went ahead and I forked that GitHub repository into my own and I updated this tabular analyzer template file in order to add this bus matrix. So what does that look like? Okay. First, let me show you the model that I'm going to use. I have a very simple Contoso data model that just has sales and the dimensions that you're familiar with with Contoso. One of the, the next steps that you need to do before you get into this is come into your files and options and under options, go into security and make sure that this box require user approval for new native database queries is unchecked. If you watch Alex's video, you'll see we're going to have native queries that are going against what's called the, the DMVs, which are um, dynamic management views inside your analysis, inside your, your model that gives information, the metadata about that. Having this unchecked will cause, uh, will allow you to run those queries without having to be prompted. Once you have this model up, what you want to do is also bring up DAX Studio connected to that model. The reason being is we're going to use this to get our server name, which is down here at the bottom, and our database name, which is here at the top. So let's see where that comes into play. I've already started uh, opening a new blank report and told it to navigate to the directory that I uh, brought down my GitHub repository, changed the type to Power BI template, and I have my tabular analyzer template here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, click open, and when that comes up, I'm going to be prompted for the server and the database name. This is where DAX Studio comes in 
with the PP with the um, the model that I currently have open. So let me get to that correct page. I'm going to first use this copy feature here to get my uh, my server name and if I navigate over to the right box, boom, put that in back to keep clicking on the wrong one. Sorry about that. Back to DAC Studio, get my database name and put that in there. So that's a GUI that, that you'll, you'll be able to grab. We're going to click load and you'll see it's going to go ahead and run these queries. If you haven't run any of these queries before, you might get, oh, uh, you do. You, when you run these queries, you'll get prompted for uh, the credentials used to connect. Just use your current Windows uh, credentials, say connect. Okay, so my refresh is now completed. And you have in this report that the two Alex has put together, you have this main page, which is your model details, and then these buttons to navigate through some other pages. You could play with this um, or watch their video to learn more about that. But what I want to show here is what I added that I called the page called bus matrix. And again, this one is extremely simple for um, this model because there is only one fact table and the uh, dimension tables, but you could see that it puts those check marks in there against your own model. It should come out with, with more if you have more fact tables, but even just providing this level of detail, I think can be helpful. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this video. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you want some more. I'll have the links to my GitHub repository that you could get this PP, the template file, the PPPIXT, if I could say that nicely, and, um, and other links. Thanks for watching.